In this class, we're going to consider the average rate of change of a function. So remember that the values of a function are the, the y values, the up and down values on the graph of the function, or you could consider it to be the output values of the function. So you've got some function f of x, and the x's are the input values. So these are the values that we're going to put into the function, some number, and the function does something and it turns out some f of x value, and that's the output value. So for example, the function f of x equals 2x, that's a very basic function, it takes the input of x, multiplies it by 2 to give you your output. So if you took something like f of 3, 3 is the input, 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 is the output. So when we come and look at the average rate of change of a function, what we're measuring is the difference between different output values in a specified interval of input values. So that sounds quite complicated, but let me put up another example here. So if we had f of, say, 9, so 2 times 9 is 18, so we would be looking to say, well, if we want to start to gain some information about the behaviour of this function, we could look at these two values and compare them and say how much have they changed in comparison with how much these guys have changed. And for certain types of function, um, that's going to be quite different to other types of function. And that gives us insight into the behaviour of that function. So the way that we do this in general is that we need a range of values, a range of input values. So we just say that that range is going to be between some A value and some B value. So we're just taking a, an interval of values between some number A and some number B. So for example, that could say something like 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. So we were just looking at a range of values between 1 and 10 for our input values in that case there. But it just depends on the question as to what that input value range is going to be. But then we want to look at how the function is behaving at these endpoints. So we look at f of a, which is just the end point of the interval evaluated um, through the function. So you're putting whatever that number is, like 1 into the function. And we do the same for f of b. But remember that these output values, f of a and f of b, these are just the y values on the graph of the function. So these are going to be the x values, these here, a and b. f of a and b, the whole thing, are going to be the y values. And so effectively what we're doing here is we're kind of comparing the, the, the difference in the height, the y values, versus the difference in the horizontal change, the x values. So the formula that we use for this based on these here is just f of b minus f of a. So that's just capturing that difference between the y values, different, difference between the function values, which is just the difference in the, in the vertical um, aspect of the graph of the function. And we divide that by the change in the x values, which is b minus a. Now, if you're familiar with straight lines, if you've already done a straight line topic, you'll know that this is just a function for a gradient. This is just the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's, or what we sometimes call the vertical, divided by the horizontal. So what we're effectively doing here is applying that gradient formula, but instead of calling it gradient, we're calling it a rate of change. It's how quickly are these values changing with respect to these uh, values or the respect to the interval of those values. So all we effectively have to do to calculate this, and this is going to calculate to come out to be a single number, all we have to do is to put the numbers into the formula and then work out what we get. If we take this guy here and plug in these numbers, so we did 18 and 6, so it would be 18 minus 6 divided by 9 minus 3. So 18 minus 6 is 12, 9 minus 3 is 6, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So notice that that one came out here to have an average rate of change of 2, but because this was a linear function, in other words a straight line graph function, the gradient, the rate of change, we already knew it was 2, because that is the, the, rate, the, the gradient, the rate of change for a straight line, because it's y equals mx plus c, if it was in a straight line equation format. So for straight line equations, the gradient of the line is exactly the rate of change. When you start to move to curves though, like we'll look at in a second, that correlation doesn't quite ring true. Um, and we'll see that when we look at this example.
So this is basically the formula that you need to take away from this class. And remember, that's only valid when you've got a range of values A and B. So for this question here, this is our function, and we're going to say that we're looking at the range of values minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. So we're just looking on the x-axis between minus 1 and uh, 3. And if we sketch the graph of this one, it comes out to be a parabola because it's an x-squared, in other words, a quadratic function, and the graph just looks something like that guy there. Just very roughly, that's not perfect, a <laughs> quick sketch. Um, so minus 1 is over here somewhere, let's say that that's negative 1 there, and 3 is over here somewhere, I can't remember exactly where, I think it's roughly about there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is find the y coordinates that go with those. So those are going to be our a and our b values. So I'll just maybe write that at the side. So our a value is minus 1 and our b value is 3. We want to work out now the f of a and the f of b. So that's just the y coordinates of these points. So the y coordinate of that point is going to be the one that's directly underneath it on the curve. So that's going to be the point there. And the point here would be up there somewhere. Okay. So if we take minus 1 and put it into the function, we get minus 1 squared, which is 1. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. So that's 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Take away 3 is minus 4. Yeah. So that's going to be the point at minus 1, minus 4. If we do the same thing for this point here, if we put 3 in there, 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. So 9 plus 6 is 15. Take away 3 is 12. So that's going to be the point 3, 12. So you can tell that my sketch isn't quite right because that point 3 along and 12 up, it should be higher up. So it would just mean that my parabola needs to be... I might just correct that actually because it looks a little odd being there. It just means that my parabola needs to be a little steeper. So in reality, I just drew it real quick, but in reality it would be maybe something like that and the point might be more up sort of here somewhere. So I'll put this in red. So it's just going to be higher up because it's a point 3, 12. So what we're going to be working out here, this is, well, this is not a straight line graph like that one would be, but what we're working out here effectively is the gradient of this line. That's going to be our average rate of change. Whatever that gradient comes out to be, that is the average rate of change of the function between those two points. So we're just going to plug into our formula. Um, so this actually, let me just explicitly put here that our f of a value, that's the one we got for putting minus 1 into the function, that came out to be minus 4. And our f of b value, that's the one that we got by putting 3 into the function, that came out to be 12. So our f of b is 12. Take away our f of a, but f of a is already negative, so it's going to be minus minus 4 divided by b minus a, so it's 3 minus minus 1. So be careful with your double negatives there. Any formulas that have got negatives, Got to be more attentive. 12 minus minus 4, that's 12 plus 4, which is 16. 3 minus 1, minus 1 is 4. So the average rate of change comes out to be 4. And that tallies up quite well with the graph because that's saying that this line, the red line, should have a gradient of 4. And it looks 4-ish. I mean, a, a straight line going up to the right has got a positive gradient. Anything steeper than 45 degrees is something more than a gradient of 1, so that actually looks really good. So that number maybe doesn't mean all that much in itself. It might be more useful in comparison with the rate of change of another function, and you could compare the numbers and say one has got a higher rate of change, it's more variable than the, than the other one. But that's how we measure it, just by this formula here, which is effectively just taking two points on the curve, drawing a line between them, and then working out the gradient of that line. That steepness basically gives you one measure of the rate of change of the, of the function. So it's quite an easy process once you've done a couple of these. Once you move forward in to working more with functions, so by the time you get into calculus, um, although probably not quite in pre-calculus, you would need to be in calculus already, Instead of taking this average rate of change, we look at what's called an instantaneous rate of change. So effectively, we shrink this point back until it's infinitesimally close to the other point, 
And instead of saying we want the rate of change between these two points that are quite far apart, we want instead to get the rate of change right at that point. So it's far, far more accurate. This is called an average rate of change because it is just an average over the course of that interval between minus one and three. It's not instantaneous, but you've got that to look forward to in the future if you get as far as calculus. But for the time being, for this class, average rate of change, interval of x values, work out the f of a, the f of b that go with these endpoints, and then just plug into that formula and get some numerical value for your answer. Not particularly difficult, but you might take a few questions just to get the hang of it.